I'm Jennifer Delacuadri, and this is the Raising Happy Teens podcast, where you learn how to successfully guide your teenager into adulthood without losing your sanity in the process. Let's do this. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about how being a parent of a teenager can actually make you a better person. But first, I'd like to start with a story. Don't we all love stories? When I was a teacher in the classroom, that was like my favorite time (laughs) during the day is when it was read aloud time and I could read books to the kids because everybody loves a good story. So this is actually a personal story. So back when my daughter was in second grade, she was just, you know, starting to figure out social dynamics and she had some friends. And of course, in a school setting, there's going to be people who are all different kinds of ways, right? She came home one day and she was upset. And it was because another person in her class, a girl, had called her fat. And I remember when that happened, my body went into an immediate reaction. And I was angry, I was sad, I was frustrated, and I felt like it hurt me more than it hurt her. And I remember like, she seemed bothered by it, but she wasn't like really bothered by it. I was the one who was like really bothered by it. So much so that like the next day, I was at work and you know, just going through my things and I kept thinking about it and I couldn't even concentrate on what was going on because I was still so upset about it. And here's why. All of the memories and securities I had growing up were bubbled up to the surface in that moment. When I was growing up, I had a lot of insecurities around my weight and I was called fat. I was quote unquote, the fat kid in the class in elementary school. I don't know if anyone else saw it that way, but I know I did. And so when this happened with her, all of those memories and those pains and that insecurity came back up to the surface. They had been buried for years. Like, of course, I had some insecurities around my body and my weight, but like that I'm the fat person kind of had been covered up for a while. And I actually thought that I was over it. I was like, okay, that, that's something that's happened in the past. I've gotten over it. I've moved on. But the truth is I was just avoiding thinking about it which is so easy to do because it wasn't in my face every day. And then when that happened with my daughter, it hurt on two levels. I was hurt for her, but I was also hurt for myself, like reopening that wound. And her experience uncovered all of the things I experienced that I didn't want for her. So my empathy was in like full drive. I was basically feeling how I imagined she would feel. And she was experiencing something that I wanted to shield her for, for her entire life. And so this is just one experience. This is when she was in second grade. I could make a laundry list of the times this has happened with both of my girls since then. (laughs) But we don't have time for that on on this podcast. But I wanted to share that with you because this is what happens as parents. And as hard as these experiences are for me, and they have been for me, they've actually really helped me. They've helped me overcome old wounds and just feel more confident in my life. And to think you're a parent and you're just now learning how to overcome these challenges that you experienced as a kid, the opportunity is so huge when you have kids because it's basically being brought up again to the surface. And when these things happen, it's really an opportunity to learn and grow and heal if you choose to do so. Of course, We could compartmentalize and just keep the lid on those past experiences, and sometimes it feels safer to just do that. But these old memories and hurts, they don't just go away. They may be forgotten or overshadowed, but they haven't really been addressed a lot of the time. So when you have the courage to really step into the discomfort and get curious about what's coming up, it's huge, and it's an opportunity to grow. But here's really the secret that most parents don't realize, and that's raising a teenager isn't just about shaping them, it's about shaping you. 
And so I'm going to give you a few examples from some of the clients I've worked with. One of my clients had a daughter who was struggling with anxiety. And this particular client had also struggled with anxiety most of her life. And she had learned how to just shove it down and how to compartmentalize and not let the anxiety really govern her daily decisions. And she was taught at a young age that anxiety is a weakness. And so she would just kind of like put on this facade of I'm not anxious, I'm not anxious, I'm just gonna hide it so nobody knows. It's something we don't talk about, right? And she would just hold it in. And then when her daughter started struggling with anxiety, she knew that she wanted to support her, but she didn't know how because she was never taught how. And so another example here is one of my other clients, this client's daughter was overweight. And so this client had been overweight as a child as well and didn't want her daughter to struggle like she had. So she would do everything she could to help her daughter stay active, eat healthy food. But her daughter was just seeing right through that and had begun to internalize that she wasn't good enough as she was. And so the mom was noticing this, but she didn't know what to do about it because she thought if I take action, if I help her not be overweight, then she's not going to struggle with these things that I struggled with. And finally, one third example is a parent who saw their teenager struggling to find his place socially. And he spent most of his non-school time at home. So he didn't have a bunch of friends to go hang out with. He played sports and he went to school, obviously. But outside of that, he wasn't being invited to do things and didn't have like a really active social life. And the challenge here for this parent was that it's a little bit different than the other two because instead of empathizing with the teen because they had been in his teen's shoes, this parent experienced the opposite. They were really social in high school and had lots of friends. And so seeing their teen without friends made this parent worry that something was wrong and that their son was missing out. And so in all of these examples, the emotions that are stirred up, they come from memories and experiences we've had in the past. And these memories that we've had, they shape how we see the world. And we're parenting through that lens. These memories, they form thoughts and beliefs. These thoughts and beliefs are like being overweight is bad. Having anxiety means we're weak. Having an active social life is better. All of these things shape how we interact with our teenager. But the thing is, is they're not always true. They feel true in the moment, but they're not. So there's something like that I like to call as a capital T true, and then there's a lowercase t true. Both feel true, both feel right, but the lowercase t true is more subjective, whereas the uppercase t true is more fact. So here's how you know. If an outsider were to look in at the belief, they may or may not agree. So if it's not a fact, if it is a lowercase t true, there are other ways of looking at things. And not everybody sees overweight as being bad or anxiety as a weakness or that an active social life is better, will lead to a better quality life. But sometimes it really, it just takes that outsider's perspective and a willingness to really just accept that something else might be true to challenge those beliefs. And really that's what it is. It's just recognizing that the results you're getting are not what you want. And that's what all of these parents were doing in these examples. They saw that this was happening and they just didn't know what to do about it, but they wanted to change things. They were willing to step back and just see this negative impact and decided to do something about it. So if that's where you are in any situation with your teenager, here are five things you can do to turn things around. Step one is to just acknowledge your insecurities, whether it's the fear of not being good enough or the pressure to control every aspect of your teen's life, really just identifying these insecurities, it's the first step toward resolving them. And this is easier said than done because like I mentioned earlier, it brings up a lot of really uncomfortable feelings to the surface. But that's step one is to just acknowledge that they're there. Step two is to reflect on your upbringing. So just take a moment, look back, 
at how you were raised and how that may be influencing how you are today. Are the messages that you received that weren't particularly helpful when you were young, are they still being carried around today? Things like, this is a big one, money is limited, or you have to go to college, or being a doctor or a lawyer is the only path to success. Being popular is more fun, right? Some of you may hear this and be like, well, that is true. <laughs> and again, it feels true, but it's a lowercase t true because it's not true for everyone. So to recognize on that, and then also ask yourself, are there any patterns or behaviors from your past that you're unconsciously repeating? And so just by shining a light on these old habits, you can bring them to your conscious awareness and decide on purpose if you would like to continue them. Then that moves on to step three, which is to just practice self-compassion. So what I always like to say to the parents that I work with is, you're doing the best you can with the tools you have. Be kind to yourself during these moments of doubt and frustration. And just remember that growth takes time. Parenting takes time. You're learning as you go and you're always working to be better. I know that's true because you're listening to this podcast. If you weren't listening to this podcast, then I don't know that that's true, but you're spending your time that you could be doing anything else listening to a podcast about how to be a better parent. And remember that life and parenting, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You're in it for the long haul. And each day is going to bring a new opportunity and a new chance for growth and for learning. And you can, of course, correct along the way. So you are a good parent and you're wanting to do even better. Step four is to communicate openly with your team. So just be honest with them. And let me be clear, that doesn't mean to use them as your personal therapist. I know it can be easy to do, especially if you have a teenager who's super compassionate and super comforting, but that's not their job. What I mean by communicating with your teen is to just let them know that you're working on yourself. And just to be honest, there's some things that I know are going on here. There's some old patterns, beliefs that I have that I'm working on. And I want you to know, I'm going to be honest about the fact that I am making an effort to be better and to do better. And also really communicate it honestly, if you're feeling frustrated or worried or being triggered by their experience, it's okay to be honest about that. It normalizes that we have feelings and emotions about things that happen in our life. And it really does give your teen an opportunity to learn that there's capital T and lowercase t true, and that we are running in our life, organizing and functioning through the lens of our current belief system. And if things aren't going the way we want them to go, it's time to evaluate and look at the beliefs and decide if we really want to continue to let them guide us. And step number five is to make sure you have support. Make sure you have guidance along the way. Don't be afraid to ask for help and to talk about it whether it's leaning on a partner or a family member, a friend, a therapist or a coach, just having a space to be able to talk about these things and, and really just be honest about the past and the present and the future and the concerns can really help take a load off. It can make it a little less bumpy. And this is truly the gift that parenting a teenager can provide for you. I know we talk a lot on this podcast about the challenges that can come up and how hard it can be sometimes, but this is really one of the biggest benefits of being a parent, should you choose to accept this challenge, is that you can become a better person by going through these challenges with your teen or by watching your teen go through challenges themselves. This is how you become a better person. This is how you grow and how you learn. And what a wonderful gift that you're able to do that right alongside your child, right alongside your teen. And you're setting the example of this is just what we do in our life. We're constantly growing, we're constantly learning, and we're constantly working on becoming a better version of ourselves. Not because we think it's going to make us more money, not because we think it's going to make us more successful, but because 
we want that for ourselves. And we want it for our teens too. We want it for the, the people in our life that we love. And so that's the gift. In working on yourself, you become a better person, you become a better parent, and your teenager is a fl- influenced along the way, right? Like what better gift than that? And this is something I've helped many of my clients with, and I can help you too. Remember the doors to the Raising Happy Teens parent group, they close this Friday. So be sure to secure your spot before then or schedule a consultation to learn more about private coaching. The links to sign up and schedule are in the show notes. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. If you liked this episode, I'd like to invite you to join Raising Happy Teens my free online community for parents of teenagers, where every week I host Ask a Coach. You bring your parenting questions and I provide expert advice and coaching. Click the link in the show notes to join today. I'll see you inside.